And here I want to point to, in fact, one of the main reasons, if you ask me, if, uh, if the MDGs will be achieved by many countries or by, by India as well. It's a very mixed news. But uh, if it is not, there is, I would say that one major function has been neglected, a policy function, and that is the role of evaluation. Very few countries have systems of evaluation that can really tell you whether the money being spent is yielding effective outcomes. Why is evaluation uh, so poor? Uh, I mean, in fact, when I talk about evaluation, uh, there are several problems in it. And uh, by the way, this is another major contribution of the international community. Uh, there's a field called development evaluation. Uh, I was a founding member of an institution called IDEAS. International Development Evaluation Association started in 2000, supported by UNDP and the World Bank, uh, and so on. And we were saying that, you know, we are not talking about projects. Remember the earlier conversation we had, you said you can go to a UNDP project and say, well, it's worked or not worked, and then we can ask the question, oh, hey, how will it get scaled up, and so on and so forth. So yes, effectiveness of projects is important. But you asked a more basic question, why is it not having an impact on the whole country. What is the impact on the development of the country? Which takes us back to the UN. Take the United Nations in India today. I mean, what is the contribution of the United Nations, uh, UNDP or UNICEF? I've been an advisor to UNICEF for 18 years in India. What is the contribution of United UNICEF uh, to India's uh, development? That's a fundamental question to ask. Is it in terms of the money that UNICEF gives? No. Because India, India can certainly turn around and say we don't need that money. In fact, you know, India got rid of many of the international donors and uh, have got just five or six who are allowed to function in India. Because they found that if you have 30 or 40 international donors each giving a small amount of 500,000, a million dollars, two billion dollars, five billion dollars, the headache of coordination was becoming counterproductive. So you cannot judge the contribution of the United Nations in terms of the money and the outcome of a small project. So that is why we are saying, you look at this idea of development evaluation. What has been the contribution of UNICEF to India's progress? I would say the first is to bring on the, onto the public agenda the whole question of child rights. Now, many governments, not just India, were very hesitant to even engage in the rights discourse. They continue to be nervous about saying human rights but they accepted child rights with much much more easily because yes children have rights okay okay that's all right you're talking about child survival right to education yes that's all right we all right and so on so over the last two decades or so the idea of child rights has been fully acknowledged and accepted by India and many other governments it's a very powerful idea embedded in that is also the issue of idea of gender equality and gender justice very few societies will raise these kinds of sociocultural questions uh, that, that impinge on social values, cultural values, and religion. You know, uh, suppose there's any, one particular religion that says girls cannot go to school. The idea of child rights is that all children, regardless of who you are, have to get equal rights, enjoy equal opportunities. So it opens up, I think, the power of the United Nations, an agency like UNICEF with the idea of child rights, the agency with, of UNDP, the idea of human development, is to engage people in a public discourse, which national institutions, for various reasons, find it difficult to do. Domestic violence. Domestic violence is again an issue that a lot of Indian NGOs and women's movement is strong and impressive in India, have been raising, but the support they have got from UNIFEM, uh, the United Nations, uh, it's called UN Women now, that's a new name, has been exceptional in terms of raising the question of domestic violence. It is not something that governments will do automatically. So I think the in terms of the evaluation, the development evaluation, one has to move away from projects to say, for UN, what is the power of ideas? What is it doing? What are the kinds of injustices in society that the UN is able to highlight that national governments will never do? Civil societies try to do it, but often their voice is weak. 
So when the UN and the civil society organizations join, as has been the case with the MDGs, it makes a big difference. It opens up public reasoning, public thinking, public debates, public discourse. It attracts media attention. And so, it, 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 you know, we cannot find solutions unless things are alive in the public agenda. And I think that is the power of uh, the media in India, again, talking about the media in the last 15 years, remarkable revolution in India in terms of the number of TV channels. I mean, I'm told that even during the financial recession uh, and the global trend where newspapers and media houses were struggling, India has been seeing an extraordinary boom. <laughs> If the media is just growing and growing and growing. The regional television and the national television is just expanding. And they have been contributing a lot in their own way. They will cover, they cover of course, they cover uh, sensational stories, but they've also been tracking over period uh, issues of corruption, issues of malnutrition, uh, a lot of the wastage that takes place. Uh, we're looking at the India is trying to introduce a Food Security Act that will provide food entitlements, legal food entitlements to a large proportion of Indians. Uh, while everybody is arguing about what should be the principles of this Food Security Act, the media, the television camera focuses on a pile of food grains procured by the government that is rotting, that, that is left open in the rain and getting wasted. So you cannot allow that. So the media has played a very supportive role in terms of highlighting these areas of neglect of governance, accountability questions, uh, very, very, you know, when you talk about children, uh, children who are completely uh, severely malnourished and nothing much is happening about them. So they constantly, you know, that is the role of the media in, in, its, in its broadest sense of keeping issues alive, uh, getting the people in a country to engage in the discourse and, and generating, generating public dialogue. And I think that, again, has been remarkable in India. Uh, so I don't know, as I was going back and saying the evaluation function, in fact, interestingly, you will find uh, millions of dollars will be spent or billions of dollars will be sent, spent on a program, but nothing will be kept for evaluation. And if it is evaluation, it would be mostly funded by the government uh, and undertaken by some, uh, or, you know, the ministry that is implementing will also be the ministry that is evaluating. So we have been arguing for independent evaluation organizations uh, where, where an agency that is not funding the program audits and inspects and also comments on the contribution to development. We're also encouraging people's audits that those have to be supplemented. There's no one perspective. That has to be supplemented by social audits where outsiders can go and see what is happening by public hearings. And in India, you will find these things are catching very uh, good, very fast. Uh, so you get lots of ideas when you hear public hearings, you have social audits, then you have the, we have the controller and auditor general doing the financial audit, and then you have uh, development groups doing the development evaluation. So, so if we strengthen this practice of evaluation, go back to the people and the community and say, hey, listen, these are the benefits, this is where it was lacking, this is what we have done to improve it. And this has to be done in real time, not after five years or after 10 years. Because while I accept that development takes time, you can't expect results in one year, but you cannot also wait for 10 years to evaluate a project. You have to make constant changes. And with new technology, with new information uh, methods, uh, new ways, faster ways of processing data, this feedback has to be strengthened through a continuous system of monitoring and evaluation. And I think that, again, would be a very, very important function in the coming years to, to see the realization of not just the MDGs, I would say, but of how public, very well-intended public policies, well-designed public policies are also implemented well and yield benefits to people.